In this video, I'm gonna show you my process for turning a photograph into a title shot in After Effects. Hey everyone, this is Cameron with Motion Science, and in today's video, I'm gonna show you my process for creating beautiful title shots in After Effects using only a photograph. This is a really simple technique to pull off, so let's dive in and get started. So let me show you very quickly what we're gonna create in this lesson today. I'm calling this Into the Darkness, and it's a very moody, atmospheric title piece that's actually very simple to create, and I wanna show you how I made this. Uh, just doing a little bit of experimentation, uh, and it's all based on one photograph. So let's start by creating a new composition. So we'll go new composition, new, duration, three seconds, 24 frames per second, 1920 by 1080. And we'll call this Into the Darkness. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do here is pull in an asset I have, which is under raster. And this is a stock image I found on Unsplash, and I thought it was just really cool. I did a really simple search for something like creepy or something like that, and I found this image. So what I'm gonna do is just hit Alt or Option colon, and it's gonna create my rule of thirds here, which I have across the screen. And I'm just gonna position this, you know, something like that, it doesn't have to be perfect. And the next thing I'm gonna do is bring in some footage we have here. So under my footage, here under stock, open this up. I've got two pieces of footage. I've got ground fog and I've got high angle fog. And these are both two pieces of footage that I got from Action VFX uh, that I thought was just really cool. So uh, first I'm gonna do is set this to a screen mode like we have here and just kind of position this maybe down in here. And let's go ahead and bring in the high angle fog here. If you've seen any of my videos before, a lot of times what I do here, instead of setting this to a screen mode, I will actually use an effect where I remove the, uh, the channel. So I go to channel and I'll go to shift channels. And just to show you very quickly here, if I don't wanna set this to screen, because by setting this to screen, it actually adds luminance to the image. If I take this back to normal here and I take the alpha from luminance, what that does is it creates a better looking key, if you will, on that fog. And at this point I can go to effect and I can go to generate and I can go to fill and I can fill this with a color and do it this way. But for the example here, I actually wanted to add some luminance to the image like so, so we can get a little bit more atmospheric fog. So if I preview this, you're gonna see what we have here. Let's actually go ahead and bring this up, uh, something like that. And then right here, we're gonna right click, columns, stretch, and select both pieces of footage. And we're just gonna slow these down so that they're maybe around 24%. So it just creates a slower moving fog across the scene, which creates more of an eerie atmosphere, which is exactly what I'm going for here. Next thing we're gonna do is we're going to select our type tool click up here and just type into the darkness. And I'm using a typeface here that I found uh, on a site. I think I did a Google search. It's called disordered uh, regular. I'm gonna set it to 65. That's just great. Go to my move tool here. And again, alter option colon and just bring this up in here using the rule of thirds positioning this up in this area here. And it's kind of a dark blue, so let's go to let's select it all and let's make it black. So we have just a straight up black and white image here. Now, this is a very black black here. And if you look at like the guy, he's not that deep of a black. So that's something to be aware of in the future when we're doing the final coloring on this. So let's go ahead and duplicate this layer, bring it below the layer and to this layer we're going to go to blur and sharpen and we'll go to directional blur and we're going to create kind of like a scary looking effect here where we're going to make it kind of blur out in the background there so i'm going to turn this up to about 30 and you can see what's happening right here and we're going to go ahead and set a keyframe there and go to the end of our timeline here and let's make this 40 so it stretches a little bit more and you can see that the the type 
kind of angles over here to the right. So let's kind of match the directional blur to that. So around uh, 10, 11%, let's go 10, 10 degrees, not percent, uh, looks a little bit better. So now we've got this kind of effect where, we can actually turn this down just a little bit more. So we'll start there. And you can see we have this kind of stretchy effect that's just growing very slowly here. And it just adds a little bit of visual interest to this type. Next thing I'll do, let's add some flicker to this, right? Let's make it uh, a little scarier. So let's go to layer, new, solid. And let's pick a color right in this area here. Looks good. And we'll call this flicker. And we're going to set the opacity to maybe 50%. And let's add a wiggle expression here. So we'll type in wiggle, parentheses. Let's go six times per second, a value of 50. And let's also set this to a transfer mode of overlay. And let's take a look at how this is looking here. Now, right off the top, it, to me, it's looking like the flicker is a little bit too much. I like the variance, but it's happening too often. So let's take it from six. Let's just cut that in half and let's take it down to three. And I can already tell this is looking better. It's just a little bit slower flicker. Yeah, I'm liking that a lot. It looks really good. Okay, so let's add an adjustment layer, layer new adjustment layer. And we're gonna call this blur. And we'll go up here to effect and we'll go to blur and sharpen. And we're just gonna use a fast box blur here. And we'll turn it up to something like 15. And we don't want it to blur the entire image. So we're gonna take our pen tool here and just start drawing. Basically, it's a very simple vignette. Doesn't have to be perfect. And we'll hit M for mask and we'll invert this. And we'll hit F for feather and we'll bring up the feathering here. And I'm gonna hit V for my pen tool. And I'm just gonna bring this kind of out on the edges like this. I just want it to be more subtle. I don't want it to be super in our face, with the blur. All right, next thing we're gonna do is add another new adjustment layer. So layer, new adjustment layer, and we will call this one effects. And the first effect we're gonna apply here is under noise and grain. We're gonna actually add noise this time. And we'll take this to about 12%. And it's already looking better. And let's also go to effect color correction. And we're gonna go down here to lumetry color. And under creative, we're going to select SL iron. Looking good. The weird thing now is like our type here. Our type is really black, right? And everything else is kind of like this blue black. So let's get the type looking a little bit better. So we'll select this and let's go ahead and just kind of bring this up to a blue. Somewhere in this area is gonna work just fine. So we'll copy this hex code here and take it into the color below and paste. And you can see it's already sitting a little bit nicer. The type's sitting a little bit nicer in the overall image. Okay, next thing we're gonna do is add a layer new solid. We're gonna call this fractal. And I always like to make my fractal layers black. So we'll make it black, click okay. And to the fractal layer, you guessed it, we're gonna go to noise and grain, fractal noise, and we are going to turn the complexity up to 10. And we're gonna go into transform and we're gonna scale this up to 800, make it really big, something like that. And then for evolution options, we're gonna alter option, click on random seed and put an expression of random parentheses and we'll do 100. And you're gonna see this creates this kind of interesting fractal noise that's moving around. And you're probably asking, why are we doing this? What's this gonna do? So I'm gonna show you. We're gonna go ahead and lock this layer. We're gonna turn it off. Go back to our effects layer. And for effect, we're gonna go to blur and sharpen, camera lens blur. And we're gonna bring this above the noise and lumetry color layers. And for the blur map, we're going to select our fractal noise. But it's really important at this point that we change source from 
source to effects and mass. So it recognizes the fractal noise. And we're also gonna turn the blur radius up to 15. And then if we preview this, you're gonna see there's this kind of blur effect that happens around the image. And that's because this camera lens blur is looking at the fractal noise around the screen here. And it's looking at the black and white values and saying, okay, whatever's white, we're gonna blur out. Whatever's black, we're gonna leave unblurred. So it gets this kind of interesting looking blur that's kind of happening around the screen. It's very frenzied and uh, creepy at the same time, right? So look up like this text here, you can see it kind of happening around. Okay, next thing we're gonna do is lock our top layers here and take our type image and fog layers, make them 3D. And the reason we're gonna do this is because we're gonna add a layer new camera. 50 millimeters is just fine, no depth of field, click OK. Take this to the top, P for position, right click on position, separate dimensions, add a X position and a Z position. And for the X position, let's actually bring this to the left a little bit here. So maybe something like this. And let's go to the end of our timeline and let's go ahead and drag this to the right. And let's push in. Somewhere in there. And you can see here, it's looking really cool, right? We've got it's very subtle, but, but uh, interesting push in on the scene. So we're pushing in with the type, we're pushing in with the character, the man there. Let's go ahead and alter option, click on Z position, and let's type in wiggle parentheses, and 24 times per second, I want the Z position to move by a value of 12 pixels. So you can see there the effect that we added by adding a wiggle expression to the Z position. So with the Z, the camera is moving in the entire time on this guy and the type, but at the same time, the Z wiggle position is creating a frenzied back and forth movement. One thing we can try is with the fractal noise, we could actually create uh, more contrast. So if I look at this, we can pump up the contrast. And let's say if we go up to 200, right? So we were at 100 like this. If we go up to 200, uh, it's gonna create a different look to the blur. So you can already see like this is more blurred out. Uh, maybe if I drop down the scale from 800 to 400, it's gonna make the pieces smaller. So like now we have N2, T is in focus, but this is out of focus. So let's just preview this and take a look at what this is looking like. So here's what this looks like, and it definitely has more of like a boil effect to it. Maybe that's the right word for it. Uh, maybe this works for what you're going for. Uh, it's a little bit too much for my purposes. So maybe we'll go back to 100 contrast and see what that's looking like. I don't know if it's the 100 contrast or if it's the scale that's too much for me. So let's take a look at this. And so you can get a totally different look here. I'm actually gonna go ahead and go back to 800, just like we had before. So this is the look that works for me. Really dig this a lot. And let's do one more final thing here to make this even more interesting. And that is by adding a layer new light. And we're going to make it a spotlight. And we don't need to cast shadows. Let's go ahead and click OK. And what we're going to do here is I've hit P for position. If we back this out, if I adjust the point of interest here, what you can see is I can create a transition on and off the screen here, right? So let's go ahead and position this light correctly. Bring it way up here. And I'm gonna open up point of interest. I'm gonna set up point of interest. Now, I don't have to go to complete blackness here. 
something like that. Same at the beginning. So I'm going to go and drop this down. Now let's hit AA on the keyboard. Turn down the intensity. Turn up the... Cone angle. And go back up here. And just kind of refine this. Maybe something like that. And let's preview this. And there you go. So the, the 3D light adds a really nice transition on and off the screen. So for a title card, this works really well. So there you go, my friends. There is Into the Darkness, a title card from a photo. I hope that you really enjoyed this lesson as much as I loved teaching it. So please let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. I'd love to answer them for you. Hit that like button if you enjoyed this video and please subscribe to this channel. It helps other people find this channel as well. If you're looking to upgrade your design skill set, master the art of style and execute like a pro, I have a course called Stylecraft that you can check out at motionscience.tv. You can also learn more about this course by clicking the link in the description below. As always, thanks for watching. My name is Cameron and this is Motion Science. Thank you.